22, and you can read the rest of it for yourself. Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Amen. You can read that with me because that's important. Have faith in God. Amen. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Amen. These are the words of the Lord. Amen. He talked here in this example of moving a mountain in the life of people. Amen. And I suppose he offers to us a faith that will move mountains. A faith that will move mountains. I don't know about you, but sometimes when life gets a bit challenging, you waver in your faith. That's right. Absolutely right, sir. We all struggle in our walk of faith. My Lord. I believe everyone, that's my opinion, has at one time or another struggled in their faith walk. Have mercy, Jesus. Even in scripture, we see some of the most committed and godly leaders have struggled with doubt. Oh, yeah. Amen. Elijah and all that God had done through him at the end of the day, mm -hmm. he doubted. Amen. We tend to think only Peter doubted, but no. Doubt seems to be the characteristic that marks so many believers in Christ Jesus at the end of the day. Wow. The reason for that is because we are physical beings. Truly. And we believe in those things that we can see. Mm -hmm. so. And we quickly place our faith in that which we see. My Lord, sir. But our faith walk is a walk in which we believe in that which we cannot see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hebrews talks about the evidence of that which is not seen. Mm -hmm. But spiritual realities must be experienced outside of your senses. Come on, sir. Our faith is a, is a commitment to our understanding and our intellect. So when that which is tangible and visible seems overwhelming, I'm talking about life's challenges. Right. That which we see when they become so overwhelming as did Peter when he looked around and saw the boisterous wind and how it played out on the sea, doubt then begins to shroud our belief in the invisible. So often we, our lack of faith is because we look more at the problem than we do to Jesus. We look more at what's happening to us than we do at what God said. And the confidence that he has assured us that he is always there. But when we receive doctor reports, we concentrate on the doctor's report. When we get a pink slip, the pink slip holds our attention. And all Satan wants you to do is to change the object of your focus. Where we focus more on what is happening than the word of God. We begin to say within ourselves, I don't believe I have the faith to overcome what is happening in my life. And like the woman with the issue of blood, we turn to our own personal resources. And it's only when we have exhausted all that we have, then we begin to remember the words of Jesus. But we struggle in this life for those of us who say we believe. Well, I have come to conclude that we struggle because we lose focus mm -hmm. of Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
All Peter had to do was continue to keep his eyes on Jesus. The object of your faith is God himself. That's why we see here, Mark opens in verse 22 and says, have faith in God. He didn't say have faith in faith. Have faith in God. Before we can be secure in our faith, we have to answer the question, what is your faith in? Amen. Or who is your faith in? Amen. When things go wrong, our faith turns to what and not to who. Amen. Many hold to the idea that if I have faith in faith, everything will be all right. But faith itself is not the object of your faith. God himself is the object of your faith. Amen. And that's why Mark makes it very clear that we are to have faith in God himself. Amen. And it is our faith in God that brings us into the presence of God. And it's our faith in God that then allows us to be endued with the power of God. Thank you. And we can only come into his presence through faith in his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. The same Jesus who declared that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the light. And no man can come to the Father but by me. So when you place your faith in God through Jesus Christ, then and only then, he says, can you move the mountain? That's why he started off, have faith in God. Therefore, he say, I say unto you, Based upon your having faith in God, you can then speak to your mountain. That's right. That's right. Speak to the mountain, he said. You can calm the raging sea. You don't have to wake up Jesus. All you have to do is say what? Peace, be still. He said, you speak to the mountain. I have endued you with the power. Speak to the mountains. When you place your faith in God, your problems, your situations, and your circumstances will move out of your way. Amen. But you must have faith in God yes. that the power that God has endued you with will move that mountain that's in your life. Yes. You can tell your circumstances, get out of my way. Yes. Tell your circumstances, I am created in the image and likeness of God mm -hmm. and I have the ability to speak with the authority of God himself. Get out of my way. Speak to your mountains. Tell your mountains that you will not triumph over me. Be thou removed and watch your mountain crumble at your feet. Speak to the mountains with authority and claim the victory that has been secured in the blood of Jesus Christ. When you find yourself in the midst of your struggles, when it appears that your problems are gaining ground on you, look up. Yes. Look to the hills, he said, and see the mighty hand of God moving on your behalf. All you have to do is speak the name. That at the name of Jesus, even hell trembles. And the devil will flee. When you speak what God has told us, then and only then, Will your mountains move? But it starts with you having faith in God. Amen. There's no magic in this. As believers in Jesus Christ, we should be so secure in our faith that the first thing we do when life pushes back is call the name of Jesus. Don't call the counselor. Don't call your boss. Call the name of Jesus. But if you're like me, sometimes you wonder. You say, but, 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 but pastor, I, I believe I'm doing this. And I don't understand why my faith is not working. Where Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 gives us the answer. Jesus said to them when they tried to rebuke the lunatic who was possessed with a demon and it would not move. And they came to Jesus and said, we spoke 
and it didn't happen. What went wrong, Jesus? Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Faith, unbelief. Faith, doubt. You doubt when you pray. He said, pray about this thing. And then speak to it. But when you pray, you must have faith in God that God hears your prayer. Amen. Most of us don't believe God is hearing our prayer. I call it praying with one eye open. <laughs> when you pray, you must believe and have faith that God hears your prayer and will answer your prayer. Amen. When you pray, you must believe and have faith in what you ask God to do, God will do it. But we pray in doubt. Therefore, the mountain just continues to grow. Let me tell you what doubt does to us. Doubt allows you to limit God with human limitations. We are limited in our knowledge, our reasoning, and understanding. But in truth, it is self-limitation. Because of this, we try to place God under the same limitations, the same possibilities as ourselves. Whatever limits us, whatever we cannot understand, whatever we cannot do, we place upon God these same limitations. God is not a man. Amen. This is where it all goes wrong. This is why when the money gets funny, we worry. Because we limit God in our understanding. This is why we worry about our health when the doctor says, shakes his head and says, there's nothing we can do. This is why we worry about this and we worry about that. We are limiting God because in truth, we have no faith that God is any different from ourselves. We pray in doubt. We believe in doubt. We trust in doubt. But the Bible says have faith in God. Yes. And if you're going to have faith in God, the beginning is you have to become as a little child. Amen. I love little children. Amen. They are so trusting. They completely abandon all thought of self. You take a little child and you sit them here and you say, Jump. And without thought, the child jumps. Because the child has faith in you. Amen. And in your ability to catch them. So there's no doubt, no unbelief, no fear. They trust in you and they have all trust in you. But as we grow older, we learn to fear. We learn doubt. We learn not to trust. And somebody says, jump. You say, can you catch me? <laughs> and if we believe that you may not have the ability, we won't jump at all. So we begin to limit God in the same way. God says, go. And we say, where? God says, go. And we say, when? Go! How long? God says, forget it. Forget it. You know why? Because you have no mind to go. But like Abraham, Abraham was fully persuaded. So when God said, go, the Bible says, he went. Amen. He went. When God spoke to Philip to go out on the road, he went. When God sent Paul into Jerusalem, into Rome, he went. Even knowing that his very life was at risk and others were pleading, saying, Paul, Paul, they are going to bind you. They are going to kill you. Paul told him, hush on this now. Amen now. Because God had told him, I am with you. Amen. Now, Paul. So I don't worry about this. You know, last night, I got to tell you this. So last night, uh, I have a brother named Charles, and my brother lives over in, up on 14th Street Northwest. He just retired from a giant food uh, store, and he turned 60. 
So his daughters were giving him a birthday party, which his birthday is Tuesday, along with his retirement from Giant. So we went up to Highestville last night to celebrate with him. And at the end, after everyone had said all that they had to say, you know, congratulating him for a, a wonderful career, work career, and for his birthday that will be in a couple of days, then he spoke. And he said something last night that, that just touched my heart. My mom died in 2001. Shortly after our mother passed, my brother Charles was diagnosed with colon cancer. And he told us last night, he said, 2001 was a very bad year for me. A very bad year. Nine months of chemo, they removed his colon. He has since had a liver transplant. A lot of things have, even recently, he had to go back on chemo. But he said to us last night, I said, Lord have mercy. He said, look at me. He's, I live a stress-free life. A stress-free <coughs> life. He said, I have learned to trust Jesus. He said, so I don't wake up anxious about my life. I'm not anxious about anything. I'm just grateful to God. Because God continues to sow into his life. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, wow. And all that he has endured, and yet he stands here and says, I'm stress free. I remember when he was first diagnosed. And he said, I only have one prayer. We were together up at Washington Hospital Center. And I asked him, what's that? He said, I would just love to see my daughters you know, grow up and graduate from high school, but them girls grown and I think they'll have getting ready to start turning gray. <laughs> that brother been cancer free 20 years. I'm telling you, have faith in God. And all of this happened after a, 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 a horrible diagnosis. You know, and, I, and we all begin to imagine that our brother probably wouldn't live very long. Now, he don't outlive all of us. <laughs> Stress-free <coughs> life. That's what Mark is talking about. Rather than getting all upside down when things push back, speak to the mountain. All right. Frustrated, speak to the mountain. When you're worried, speak to the mountain. When you have more downs than ups, speak to the mountain. When you have more bad days than you have good days, speak to the mountain. Tribulations, get out of my way. Trials, I got places to go, people to see, and things to do. I got God to serve. But we allow these circumstances of life, which Jesus styled as a mountain, to overwhelm us. And they all started out as a molehill. Yeah. Uh -huh. And now they are huge mountains in our lives because we haven't learned how to live stress free. We allow the circumstances and the reports to overwhelm us in this life. But that's not what Jesus Christ committed to the believer in him. He said, speak to it. I've given you the authority. It wasn't only just dunamis. He said, I've given you exousia, which is the authority to speak to your mouth. Tell it to get out of your way. Don't allow what's happening in your life to define who and what you are all about. The devil has taken control of our lives and he's having a field day because we are too afraid to speak to the devil and say, I commit you back to the hell from which you came. Get out of my way. He told us to pray about these things. That means you got to have a prayer life. Now I'll let you decide what your prayer life looks like. 
Because prayer goes hand in hand with your faith. One who does not talk to the master, it's going to be hard for you to put your trust in him. You've got to learn to talk to, the, to Jesus. You've got to be able to say, I have faith in God. And don't just call on him when things go wrong. Call on him when things are right. Praise him when things are good. Don't just sit there when it all goes wrong and say, hey Jesus. Get those choppers in here. These boys are hurt. He said, no, when things are going good, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. What you're doing is messing down those mole heels. Yes. That if you leave them there, they are going to grow and become mighty mountains. I tell everybody that a hurricane does not start out as a hurricane. It starts out as a tropical depression. All right, all right. And nobody pays any attention to it. There's a little disturbance out there in the ocean. <laughs> but once it begins to form and take on the characteristics of a tropical storm, then we give it a name. And then we trap it. And by the time it makes its way from Africa to the United States, it's a Category 5 hurricane. <laughs> That's what is happening in our lives. We are allowing these little tropical depressions to become category five storms in our life. Then we call on Jesus. You got to call on Jesus when the seas are calm, when the skies are blue and the weather is fair. You praise him every chance that you get. You're growing in your faith and you're learning to have confidence in God. You 